Merry Christmas, James Griffiths, The Vinyl Professor, here with you uh, for a special Christmas video. We're listening to uh, Phil Spector's uh, Christmas album, which uh, always comes out at Christmas. Okay, so uh, what we're going to do today is, uh, what I'm going to do today, I'm going to talk you through some uh, favourite childhood records. Now, just before I do, I'm going to go and turn Phil Spector down a little bit. Hang on a sec. There we go. So... Um, I um, have been listening to records since approximately the age of three and uh, with one or two exceptions I've never got rid of any records I've ever owned uh, but I do not have any more the very first record I ever had which was on the turntable I was given a turn uh, well, turntable I was given a Danzet record player for probably my third birthday and on the turntable was a record of Pinky and Perky it was an LP Pinky and Perky were a pair of uh, talking and singing pigs and um, there was a really good version of Oranges and Lemons so the Bells of St Clemens <clears throat> on that record I can't think what happened to that record. I find it hard to believe that I would have got rid of it, but I think I must have done because I don't have it. But <clears throat> I have, apart from that one, I think I have every single record still from my childhood. Uh, so I'm going to talk you through some of those. The first single I ever had was this. And I'm going to try and do a needle drop. Uh, if, the, if the needle drops don't happen in this video, it's because I've done a test upload and uh, received a a slap down from YouTube for it, so hopefully there'll be some needle drops. Windy Day and Rainbow. Rainbow was a TV series that was on TV uh, in England. I actually have the album. Um, <clears throat> Bungle the Bear, Zippy the Strange, Zippy Zip Mouth, Glove Puppet, uh, that was George. Um, Rainbow was a, a really long running TV series in England. Um, it's, it's too difficult to explain what it was all about now. I'm going to put a YouTube link down below so you can have a look. You can still watch all the episodes on YouTube. My kids love it. Now there was a famous trio of musicians who used to be on Rainbow and they were called Rod, Jane and Freddie. And they're the ones that most people remember. But before them there was another band called Telltale. Telltale were the group who actually recorded the theme tune to uh, Rainbow. A really good little song, but on the B side there was this song called Windy Day, and that song completely, I mean I was very, very young, I was four years old, but that, that changed my life. Um, it was a kind of almost like a folky song, a bit like um, Donovan, a children's song, but a, a, a good song, a well-written, well-crafted song with a really interesting sound. Hopefully there'll be a needle drop um, of that at some point during this video. Um, I don't know much about Telltale. Hugh, Hugh Port now was in the band. Um, and it was produced by Anton Kwiatowski in 1973. So I was actually two years old when that record was made. But I used to sit and listen to that on my little Danzet record player and I would, I would change the speed from 45 to 33 to 78 and back again. I, I was totally fascinated by it. Um, just a really important record for me. The Rainbow Theme and Windy Day by Telltale. Now I also had... Um, just I've, I've got a couple of other singles for you and then we'll go on to LPs. This was a really important one. Um, Remember You're a Womble. Uh, now what was fascinating to me about this was that this was a version of the song that was quite kind of laid back, obviously a children's record, but then um, on this LP, TV Favourites, there is a version which was much more rocked up, it was almost like a kind of do what rock and roll version of it, and that absolutely fascinated me, the idea that there were two different versions of these two songs, you know, one was quite sort of laid back and gentle, and, and you know, one packed a bit of a punch. So this LP um, was given to me as a gift, I believe, by my grandmother, and it's on the Happy House Records label. And I mean, you can see from the uh, cover, Pink Panther, Magic Roundabout, uh, Rupert the Bear, and it also contains a rather odd version of the Doctor Who theme as well. So that was one of the first sort of LPs that I ever spun. Um, but. The LP that really, really kind of uh, ignited the touch 
paper, so to speak, was this one. Now, if you're of a certain age in the UK, you will probably have this album. This is Ed Stewart's Pop Party, featuring Ed Stewart. Ed Stewart, uh, you'll probably know, was a, was a British DJ. His career started at about the same time, or at, at exactly the same time, really, as John Peel. Um, uh, but he went into the kind of light entertainment side of things rather than the kind of you know cutting edge music. He presented a show called Cracker Jack on British TV for many years, uh, and then he ended up as a Radio 2 DJ. He died, I think, this year or maybe last year. But this was a great album. This is Ed Stupot's Pop Party. I think the idea of it was that it was a record that you could, that parents could put on for their children on the day of the birthday, and it just basically takes you through the whole kind of you know party. There's musical statues, there's games, uh, there's songs. There's the back cover. Um, maybe do a quick needle drop now so you can hear how it starts. Hmm. Hello, darling. Hello, darling. <laughs> Welcome to Stupot's Pop Party. From now till the end of side two, it's party time. Yes, real party time. And lots of your favourites to sing and dance to, and a couple of party games, and a dancing contest. And if mum and dad are really feeling generous, perhaps a couple of prizes for the best girl and the best boy dancers. Well, who likes Gary Glitter? Do you? Good. Well, so do I. We can all join in on this one too. Dancing and singing. I love, you love, me love. Okay, um, but what was amazing about this particular record was that at the end of side one, there's a game of musical statues, and the record that he plays, he plays on here, for the game of musical statues is Get It On by T-Rex. And on side two, there's a little dance medley. And if you can see there, the songs in the medley are Jeepster, Ride a White Swan, and Hot Love by T-Rex. And that was the first time I had ever heard T-Rex or those records at all. Because by then, of course, this was I had this in 1977. So those records were already a few years old. I hadn't even started watching Top of the Pops yet, so I knew nothing about music, about pop music. So to hear T-Rex on this record, that was a big deal. Uh, and this was a this was a really important record to me. And I used to stare endlessly at the children on the back. Um, now this is not my original copy, I know that, because even back when I was a child, I was a drummer, I used to have a bamboo stick. And when I listened to music in my room, I used to whack this stick on the floor. And sometimes I would actually whack the album covers as well. So my original copy of this, which I can't find now, is covered with all these little... <laughs> kind of dots where my stick had been hitting the sleeve. But anyway, yeah, just a pivotal album for me, Ed Stupot's Pop Party album. There was another TV show in England as well called Play Away, featuring um, Brian Cant, who was an actor turned TV children's presenter. And Play Away was a big, big show in England. Um, this is mainly a musical album, but it features it featured three musicians. Um, Jonathan Cohen, who's a pianist, Spike Heatley, who was a bass player, and this guy, Alan Rushton. Now, for all you pop trivia people or rock trivia people, if you know the album by Bill Fay called Time of the Last Persecution, unbelievably, Alan Rushton is the guy who plays drums on that album. <laughs> um, he was the drummer, he was the house drummer in, in uh, Play Away for a, a fair few years back in the 1970s. Um, this was a good album. It introduced me to songs by... Pete Seeger, Scott If I Had a Hammer. It was just kind of, you know, stories and sketches and things. Um, but yeah, a good album, good fun. Her name was Tony Arthur. Also had uh, the record of Dougal and the Blue Cat, which was an absolutely fantastic uh, film version uh, of The Magic Roundabout, uh, as written and voiced uh, by Eric Thompson. Um, just an LP version of that. Uh, <laughs> I might do a quick needle drop of this one. This is a Punch and Judy album, and I used to absolutely love this. Um, it was quite dark. I mean, Punch and Judy was always it always had a dark kind of thing going on. And there's a scene in it where he tricks the devil, or he 
tricks a ghost, or you trick somebody into hanging themselves. Anyway, uh, let's do just do a quick needle drop on this one now. The Chamber of Horrors hit Madame Tussaud, and I'm here to punish you for all your evil ways. You're going to be hanged. It's too late. I brought the gallows with me. See, there's the noose. No, it's not the nine o'clock noose. That's news. This is a noose. This loop in the rope, look. And I want you to put your hand through it. Ah, you very stupid and very ignorant punch. I'll show you just one. You put your hand through the loop like this, right? No, no, don't, don't pull the rope. Okay, so that was um, Punch and Judy, and that is on the Music for Pleasure label. And that was a big album for me as well. I used to sit in my bedroom listening to that over and over and over again. Jeff Love, where would a 1970s childhood be without the great Jeff Love and his orchestra? This is Star Wars and other space themes. Lots of wacka wacka guitar. Uh, good version of the Doctor Who theme again. Good version of Thunderbirds. I was never quite convinced by the portrait of uh, Han Solo on the cover. And there's something strange looking about the Starship Enterprise there as well. And we have the TARDIS. See the TARDIS? Um, yeah, I mean, Jeff Love. We all know Jeff Love. And then um, there were two albums which were really crucial to my musical development in terms of children's records. And they were the first, I believe this was the first Muppet Show album. Uh, and also the second Muppet Show album. Um, I don't need to talk too much about the Muppets because you'll, I mean, you'll know how important they were if you were a certain age and vintage. But of course, they, they always used fantastic session musicians, and you could be introduced to all sorts of music: soul, rock and roll, blues stuff, R and B. Um, it was an amazing. I mean, the, uh, the house band Dr. Teeth featuring the immortal animal on drums. Um, there he is, my, my earliest uh, drumming hero. Um, yeah, I mean, the Muppets were a huge part of everybody's lives back then, and um, I, used to, I, I used to obsess about those albums, I used to listen to them all the time. Um, and so, so finally, to finish with, got a couple of Doctor Who records here. This is the Doctor Who, the music, which came out in I think yeah, yeah, a little bit later. This one actually, 1983. By the time I was 12 years old, um, but this one was kind of more significant. This was um, Genesis of the Daleks, um, which was a 1974 Tom Baker Doctor Who adventure. Uh, it was the BBC released it uh, on LP in a kind of edited format. But what was incredible about this record was, if you think back to those days, there were no videos, there were no DVDs, and when this record came out, this is in 1979, Tom Baker was still the Doctor, but we hadn't, nobody had seen his earlier stories at that point for a, quite a long time. And apart from the books, this was the only way you could really relive a story like Genesis of the Daleks. So this was this was a big deal. If you were a Doctor Who fan back then, which I was, this was an amazing, amazing thing to have. Um, and um, we'll do a little needle drop on this now as well. Let's just go for it. Uh, we are a but we live up. This is only the beginning. We will get hair, we will grow stronger. When the time is right, we will emerge and take our rightful place as the supreme power of the universe. Okay, so there we have Genesis of the Daleks, written by Terry Nation and released on BBC Records. Fantastic. Okay, BC, so I hope you enjoyed that little trip down memory lane, and um, we may finish with a needle drop 
if I can get away with it. So in the meantime, have a great Christmas. I will probably now see you after Christmas and um, wishing you all love and peace uh, and a wonderful festive season. Catch you later. Bye. It's a windy day, such a Everybody's ducking and grumbling at that.